an underlying story that Penn State fans are following is a comment here from Joe that I want to bring forward. And this is very facetious and tongue in cheek. There is no concrete information behind this. Joe just saying, quote, congrats on James Franklin going to Alabama. Now, the news that broke yesterday and rattled the college football world, Nick Saban has retired and is no longer the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, something that is unfathomable, but at the same time, he's 72. He has made his money. He has done everything there is to do. He is arguably the greatest college football coach that ever lived, six national championships. There were a bevy of names thrown out by reporters speculatively as who could potentially take the Alabama job. Names like Dan Lanning at Oregon, names like Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, names like James Franklin from Penn State. I feel like the person taking this job at Alabama has to be perfect. And not that they need to be the perfect choice, but it has to be something that that fan base is going to accept and comprehend. It's a damn near impossible job because you're trying to fill those shoes. I don't envy the person who takes this job. I personally feel very strongly that James Franklin is not going from Penn State to Alabama. If he is, be the first person to knock on my door and tell me that I was wrong. But I would be freaking stunned if Alabama pursued James Franklin and if James Franklin wanted to leave for Alabama. Well, I wouldn't be stunned if Alabama pursued James Franklin. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't okay. be stunned if they pursued him. Now, if he would go, that's a different story. I think mean, he's a pretty smart guy when it comes to charting his career and where he has, you know, some level of leverage and what he's been able to build. But like, let's not get it twisted. I know sometimes it happens when we're here, but he's a he's a premier, he's a top eight coach in the, uh, undoubtedly in college football. And when we think of a position. Like Alabama, I think you have to make sure that the head coach operates within the whole culture, right? Even from the standpoint of Joe Moorhead taking a job at Mississippi State. Does, is he a great coach? Yes. Is Mississippi State and living in Mississippi the great fit for Joe Moorhead? Probably not. And I would look at the same type of thing with James. But from the other side, I mean, I can understand why Alabama, if they're looking down their short list of coaches, they'll come into the situation. What he's been able to do and turn around at Penn State over the past 10 years, you have to consider him. I mean, so, but I don't think he's going anywhere. I think he's built something special at Penn State and he wants to finish the, finish the job. And again, I come back to what is the guy that is going to appease the Alabama fan base? There's that video out there of Alabama fan Willie in, in tears and I think he was extremely drunk so let's factor that in but like this is a fan base that has gotten used to winning at a very high level nothing against James Franklin but in 10 years one big 10 title a lot of 11 and 10 win seasons but has not gotten over the hump I think that would upset Alabama fans that would be like eh. now you could point towards his experience in the SEC had success at Vanderbilt those are not even the same world, Alabama and Vanderbilt within the uh, within the SEC. Let's say that to me, Justin, and this is just spitballing. The only guy that makes sense, the only guy that has the balls to do it is Lane Kiffin. And I believe Greg McElroy already came out today publicly and I guess had maybe some inside information is that Lane Kiffin's already out in regard to being a candidate. That's who I would have picked. I, I would have said Lane Kiffin. And, just, and to your point where it's like the winner situation, I would my, my rebuttal or retort to that is that every person that you named on that list, only one person has a national championship, and that's Davo Sweeney. I mean, so from that standpoint, I think all coaches are losers then. If like if we hold that standard of like if you don't win a national championship, we just gotta know like Jim Harbaugh, he never beat Urban Byron. You know what I mean? So like when we think of winning, it becomes relative until you see that thing through because now Jim Harbaugh is the I mean, he's going to be considered one of the top coaches in college football or mm -hmm. coaching in, in general. But like just three years ago, we were talking about, is it too big for him? Is it the right fit and all these different things? So I guess I'm saying that to say is the winning is relative. I mean, like uh, to be honest, because I've seen different records get portrayed or storytelling behind different lesser records uh, hyped up a little bit differently than even James. So I, I think the winning thing is it's interesting in college sports because every fan base has a different requirement of winning. Like Texas sure. A&M, Texas A&M, like 
they, they want to win a national championship, but they'll probably never win more than nine to 10 games. Like they are who they are just based on everything else. So it's like, you have to hit your maximum and whatever that ecosystem is. Cause I mean, I've talked to my friends this morning, like this, to be honest, we look at the, if we just put up 10 years of Penn state history forever, you can slap up the past 10 years against any 10 year span and kind of argue which, like which run is better. So I think it could be up for it. Uh, but I don't think it's a fit for him. So I'm saying all that to say is he stays put and we keep trying to finish the job here at Penn State. I agree. I will say this about whoever takes the Alabama job is that you are in store for a wonderful buyout. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be a new long. <laughs> If it were me, I would argue or I would negotiate for a Jimbo Fisher-esque buyout, if not greater, since the market has now been set. Because I do not envy whoever takes that job. Because how do you follow arguably the greatest coach ever? You can't. How do you do it? You come in as authentic as possible, and you have to be able to stand on, stand ten toes down, and like create your own, your own lane within that organization. Because I think whatever organization, I mean, Alabama is a strong organization, but within that organization, it has to still appease those Alabama fans, like Alabama mm -hmm. Willie, right? I, I mean, I've seen it here in Pittsburgh. Like everyone's thinking, like, how, who's going to replace Bill Cower? Like the great Bill Cower. Mm -hmm. And we saw someone who came the eleventh choice, or whoever, however low Mike Tomlin was on the list to come in, and he came in with his own unique style that fit within the Steelers organization. But I think that's mm -hmm. kudos to the Steelers organization and knowing what they're looking for. I think a lot of times in college football, these administrators and college programs, they don't know what they're looking for. They just see like, hey. I want that guy, or I want the guy that has a high PFF, or I want this. Like, so that's my whole situation. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how their little talent acquisition process goes and who lands at Alabama.